You can practically see it from here. What? Home. You know you're watching a Christopher Nolan film if there's a non-linear story. From the mind-bending memento to the more subtly cryptic interstellar, Nolan disorients his audiences with puzzles that build suspense and reward multiple viewings. Wait, whose subconscious are we going into exactly? Subjective point of view. We're immersed in the character's perspective, through everything from the camera as participant to a subjective story structure. We're often given only as much information as the characters get, entering into their limited perspective of the world, and with this information concealed from us, we're engaged and we're made into detectives. The underlying puzzle or mind teaser we're piecing together demonstrates Nolan's clear interest in philosophy and deeper questions of the nature of human existence. We get ambiguous endings, our questions intentionally unanswered. The purposeful lack of clarity comes from Nolan's desire to place us in his character's shoes, piecing together the truth with them. At the same time, Nolan himself claims to know the answer to each of his open-ended plots. He says, says that even if a film ends with ambiguity for the audience, the creator must be sure of his true interpretation to avoid contradiction or lack of substance. Many characters have a split identity, divided or multiple selves, or some deep psychological problem or identity conflict. There's moral ambiguity. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. The concept of a hero-villain divide is complex and unclear. Heroic characters with good intentions often turn into antagonists, and sometimes the archetypal villain is given depth and made sympathetic. Nolan often gives us a cruel world and questions how morality is to be maintained or measured in these muddy situations. Light, darkness, and contrast convey character growth, decay, and exploration. In Batman Begins, light represents truth when Bruce Wayne uses a flashlight as he ventures into the dark Batcave to face his fear. We see conventions of film noir, including a lonely protagonist, themes of betrayal and duplicity, and a moody, dark, dramatic atmosphere. Nolan favors a realistic style, film over digital, and practical effects over CGI. The opening scene from The Dark Knight Rises, where Bane and his crew hijack a plane that's then dropped from the sky, was a practical effect, shot in Scotland over the course of two days. The prestige's natural light and real locations prevent it from feeling too much like a distant period piece. And Nolan achieved impressive effects like the spinning hallway in Inception and the ship in Interstellar through building sets rather than a green screen to give the movies a realistic feel. We can read many of his films as self-referential analogies for the creative process. You create the world of the dream. We bring the subject into that dream and they fill it with their subconscious. Common themes that show up include revenge, anger, guilt, sacrifice, solitude, memory, and obsession. And he works time and again with cinematographer Wally Pfister, composer Hans Zimmer, writer Jonathan Nolan, his brother, co-producer Emma Thomas, his wife, and a number of familiar faces in front of the camera. Taking all these things together, we can gather that Nolan's worldview is always inquiring, looking deeper at the human condition, trusting in our deeper intuitions and subconscious, and challenging the knowledge we take for granted. Did you mean to shoot Hap? I, I don't know anymore. Starting from a simple-seeming premise and traditional action-adventure cinema entertainment, he draws us into asking larger, daunting questions like can we trust our own minds, is there an objective truth out there, and do we even want to accept that truth if we have the chance? You keep telling yourself what you know, but what do you believe? What do you feel? 